The biggest tech event of the year is still on for now, at least, despite the rise in COVID cases. CES is scheduled to kick off and open to the public January 5th in Las Vegas, both in person and online. And joining us now to talk about it is Ian Sher with CNET. First off, CES is going hybrid this year. Tell us what we can expect. It's going to be interesting. I mean, first off, there's been an ongoing conversation about what the Consumer Electronics Show is anymore, right? Because we've got uh, these other shows that go on, not just Apple events, but Microsoft has their own events. Google has their own events. Amazon has their own events. So a lot of the big players in the tech industry don't particularly participate anymore, or at least make huge announcements like they used to. On top of that, one of the other things that we're dealing with is the reality of COVID. And the tech industry had a lot of the air sucked out of it last year during uh, CES. You know, there were some announcements, but most of them were pretty muted, partially because the tech industry didn't really know what to do with this craziness going on. And also partially because the chip shortage, which has been really problematic for the tech industry, right? It's kept computers and video game consoles and all other sorts of stuff from being easily accessible. That has also seemed to slow down the pace of innovation from anyone but the biggest players. So it makes this whole thing a little interesting. Yeah, it probably will be very interesting. But let's talk about some of the highlights. Robots might be a big focus this year. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that we're going to be watching pretty closely is how much the smart home, as people like to call it, is going to be getting even smarter. And it's interesting because when I first saw like the video doorbells right over a decade ago, I was like, no one's going to spend hundreds of dollars for a video doorbell. That's ridiculous. And then a bunch of people did. And now it's become its own industry. And so what we're starting to see is that ever more stuff is starting to be built into our homes, whether it is a voice assistant being built into everything from our speakers to our washing machines to all sorts of other stuff. And now also that partially thanks to Amazon with their Astro robot they announced last year, uh, really we're looking at the possibility of a of robots starting to become more and more common in our homes. And it feels very sci-fi, admittedly very early stages, right? A lot of this stuff is going to be kind of show off, gee whiz, not actually useful in your home, but interesting ideas. And then over time, at some point, if it works, we will start seeing these things actually show up in our homes. Yeah, as long as, as, long as I can clean my kitchen, I'll yeah, be ready for that you one. Clean your kitchen and also not like destroy your family, right? That's the key thing that we want. Exactly. We don't want a Terminator, but we do want it to fold our clothes. Absolutely. I like that. All right. So let's talk about working from home. A lot of us have been in that position. Many people are still doing that with the pandemic still ongoing. What about home technology? How is that going to be highlighted? A lot of what we're going to be hearing about, honestly, is about advancements in making life a lot simpler, right? And, and this, this is going to feel like a trend that's been going on for a long time because it is, right? You've got stuff like smart uh, technology coming from a lot of the companies who make uh, kitchen appliances, right? Making them work better with our voice assistants, making them work better with the internet. A lot of this stuff is has been kind of we've been seeing this coming for quite a while and now it's starting to happen. So you can do stuff like being able to tell your oven to turn on through your device, or you can even control stuff like it, have a sensor put into your meat and tell the oven when to turn off when it hits a certain level of heat on the meat. And so these are all the types of things that we're gonna see more and more of. And all sorts of companies are gonna try and do this because in a lot of ways, this is a, a whole boon for an industry that up until now has resisted a lot of technology, right? The, the companies who make appliances and all of this stuff, they've done very little when it comes to integrating the internet. And now they see a huge opportunity, but they have to get it right. Yeah, I think it's time they evolve to that as well. All right, CES also looks at the future of cars. What, we, what can uh, we expect here? Yeah, so the CES in the car industry is also very interesting because it's right before the, the massive auto shows. So 
typically what's happened, we've seen companies like Ford and Audi show up at CES and almost treat it like the pre-auto show. And a lot of what they've ended up doing is actually showing off ideas about how can cars be smarter, right? And there's the obvious stuff like being able to work better with Spotify or Amazon Music or Apple Music, and that's all great. And for a while, a lot of car companies were showing off that they had a Siri button on their steering wheels, which was considered innovation at some point. But now a lot of it is actually showing what they're able to do outside of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are the two very popular systems for plugging in your phone and having it control your infotainment system. So we'll see some of that. We're going to see integrations with various companies. I would not be surprised if I started seeing even automated stuff, like let's say that I'm heading out to the movie theaters and then suddenly my car can immediately try and find a parking spot that I can rent for an hour from wherever. And those types of things are already, companies have been trying to do this for a long time, but we're at a point with all these apps and all of these technologies that it is possible. So we're going to see some of that stuff going on. All righty. And what about drones? You know, we've done a couple of stories about delivery drones. That, that <laughs> Those might actually be on display at CES. Yeah, we're going to start seeing a lot of drone talk. And in fact, part of it is because this stuff is really starting to actually come into our lives. I know it seems pretty silly, but there are actually real tests going on right now throughout the world of delivery drones. And, you know, they're not delivering stuff like cat litter. It's mostly stuff like toothpaste, but they are trying to come up with ways for how to use them effectively. And so you are going to see more and more companies going back to at-home robots, trying to show how they can create these devices that will be helpful. And, and a good kind of way to think about this is what Amazon was showing off when they announced their Astro robot, which we, of course, have video of, of on CNET, where it was not just a thing that you could ask questions and have it go around and show you stuff in your home, but also you could put like a beer in the back of it and send it to your friend in the other room and stuff like that. So I imagine that we're going to see some amalgam of a lot of these ideas. Yeah, it's also fascinating. I love imagining what all of this looks like as well. All right, finally, what can we expect when it comes to health and wellness technology? A lot of people put a lot of focus on that, especially with the first of the year just uh, days away. Yeah, no, it's, it's a huge topic and something we're going to hear tons about, partially because all of these sensors that I've been talking about that make drones and all these other things possible have become ubiquitous so much that they are also being built into our smartwatches or whatever else, right? And so as a result, we're actually going to see a lot of ideas about how can we integrate these sensors into our lives in a way that makes sense. For example, I've seen a lot of companies over the years at CES who showed us sensors built into t-shirts, right? And trying to make a workout shirt that doesn't feel weird, but also has sensors on it to tell you your heart rate, what your, uh, how, you know, what your temperature is, all these types of things. So a lot of this stuff is still very bleeding edge, but there is a sense that this stuff can go beyond what's going on with our watches. And that's going to be what's really fascinating. It really is fascinating and very interesting. All right, Ian Sherwood, CNET, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me.